From the mysteries of the deep to the power of human innovation, the future of our oceans is in our hands. Together, we can protect the oceans that sustain us all. Join me on a journey of discovery, innovation, and change. Let's create a future where our oceans are safe, healthy, and harmonious. This is Harmonious Oceans. Hey everyone, welcome back to Harmonious Oceans. Today, we're gonna to be diving into our third letter R, redesigning water filtration to combat water contamination. Now that's a mouthful. It's a problem that impacts millions of people and the very ocean that sustains life on our planet. But here's the good news. There are solutions and we're gonna explore them together. So let's jump right in. Let's start with some hard truths. Every day, over 2 billion people around the world are drinking water contaminated with feces. Sounds shocking, right? Contaminated water isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's a killer. Waterborne diseases like cholera, dysentery, and even polio are all linked to dirty water. In fact, unsafe water kills more people every year than all forms of violence, including war. This is why the UN, United Nations, established Gold Six clean water and sanitation. The aim is to ensure that by 2030, everyone has access to safe, affordable drinking water. But here's the catch. If we don't accelerate our efforts, billions of people will still be left behind. And our ocean, the heart of our planet, will continue to suffer. So, what's the plan? A big part of the solution lies in improving and redesigning our water filtration systems. Think of these systems as the guardians of our water supply. They take water that's full of toxic, harmful substances and transforms them into something safe and clean. But here's where it gets interesting. This technology is evolving fast and it's becoming more accessible and sustainable. There are different types of filtration systems out there, each designed for specific needs. For example, sand filters have been around for centuries and are still widely used because they're simple and effective. They remove large particles from water, making it safer to drink. But for more serious contaminants like heavy metals and chemicals, we've got high-tech options like reverse osmosis and advanced oxidation processes. These systems are capable of removing almost all impurities, providing us with pure, clean water. But it's not just about drinking water. Filtration systems are crucial in wastewater treatment too. By treating wastewater before it's released back into the environment, we can prevent harmful substances from breaching our oceans and rivers. This helps to protect aquatic life and maintain the natural balance of our ecosystems. Let's talk about something truly cutting edge, nanotechnology. This technology uses materials at the nano scale, less than 100 nanometers to target and remove even the smallest and most dangerous contaminants from water. Nanoscale filters can trap heavy metals, bacteria, viruses, and even chemical pollutants that traditional methods might miss. These nanoparticles can be designed to specifically bind with or neutralize harmful substances, making the filtration process incredibly efficient. For example, carbon nanotubes and nanofibers are being developed to filter water more effectively, and even self-cleaning membranes that use nanomaterials to repel contaminants. These advances could revolutionize accessibility to clean water and protect our oceans from industrial pollutants. It's amazing. And it's a perfect example of how innovation can tackle some of our biggest challenges. But I think it's also important to remember that filtration isn't just some high tech thing. It's something we all can be a part of. Choosing organic options for your garden not only keeps your plants healthy, but also protects the water supply. It's a small change with a huge impact. Here's another tip that might surprise you. Don't flush your old meds down the toilet. This might seem like an easy way to get rid of them, but it can actually contaminate our water supply. Instead, find a local take-back program. They'll dispose of the meds safely, keeping harmful substances out of the water. And that's why keeping our water clean is so crucial. It's not just about our health, it's about preserving the natural beauty and diversity of our oceans. 
Now, let's hear from Samantha Farkar, who specializes in international environmental issues. She double majored in international studies and marine biology. Later, she earned a Master of Marine and Environmental Affairs, where she worked in partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. She is currently studying a PhD focused on climate change and fisheries. I think most people are aware that there's this idea of, of climate change. Um, and, you know, this is caused by excessive greenhouse gases and, and not just not just like fossil fuels, like that's a big one, but a lot of it is from um, like the agricultural industry and like cows and methane. Um, so like climate change is a very multifaceted issue. A lot of times we like to just blame one source or blame one country, but really it's, it's, a, it's a very complex issue with a lot of people contributing. Um, but yeah, in terms of fisheries, climate change is causing some fishery species to move to different locations because they're trying to follow where the water is like more cool and optimal for them. Um, it's changing weather patterns, which can change um, people's ability to get to fishing grounds. If, if the weather is bad, they can't go fishing as much and access the resources they need. Um, fisheries might be, uh, or sorry, climate change might be affecting fisheries in the sense that a lot of the biological cues, uh, like, you know, fish sometimes wait for a certain season to have to have, have babies or spawn. And then if the season gets messed up because of climate change and the weather, then the fish get confused. They don't know when to start their, their spawn. And that can have like a whole cascade because other species are dependent on that species for spawning. And it's, it's a whole mess. The challenge is that it's complicated, right? Like yeah, definitely. how, like there's so many different things, so many different ways to look at climate change, fisheries, and it, really any other environmental issue, like where to start? It's very overwhelming. And I think a lot of people, they get overwhelmed and they just shut down, which is totally understandable. It's like kind of stressful. Um, but there is a lot of like great innovation happening in, in the world with climate change and ocean protection and fisheries. So I think it's important to stay optimistic. Um, what technologies do you think we can employ to combat water contamination? Um, and what policy changes do you think are needed at a global scale to support this? Okay, yeah. So great question. Um, I think, you know, pollution is an, another really complex topic in the sense that pollution can be like oil. Pollution can be just like the plastic bottles flowing around the the ocean. Um, now there's a lot of atmospheric, atmospheric pollution. Like if you look at the Arctic regions, there's like lots of as as atmospheric mer uh, mercury and all this crazy stuff. Um, so first you got to kind of define what type of pollution you want to get after. Um, but like, it's really cool. There's um, a company out of the Netherlands and they have built these like giant uh, trash cleaning apparatuses that they put out in the ocean. So that's cool. Um, you have other other people who are trying to find new chemical processes to like capture and neutralize pollutants. Um, you have people who are like trained specialists in oil spill response who um, they have like these giant planes that whenever there's an oil spill, they like send the planes out and they try to like capture the oil before it gets bad. Um, yeah, you have uh, scientists who are who are trying to improve wastewater technology so that the water that is being uh, put into the ocean is cleaner. Um, through like, uh, instead of just like, you know, a lot of drains lead directly to the ocean, but now we're trying to add more barriers and, and um, wastewater treatment plants on some of these routes, so it's not as bad. Clean ocean water is really important, as you said. Um, um, how do you think contaminated water is impacting fish or uh, wider habitats in the ocean? So for fish, you know, obviously if it's like trash, like fish can get caught up in that. Um, and just die. I'm sure everyone's seen like a picture of like a seal or some, a seal's not a fish, but like a seal or something caught in like a soda can thing. And it's really sad. Like same thing happens to fish. Um, they can get, they get, just get caught and trapped in ropes and, and things like that. Um, then of course there's like microplastics, right? So then a lot of fish are trying, well, they don't mean to, but it, like, you know, it looks like it, the trash looks like something else. Uh, and then they eat it and then it's, it's not good. We don't, we're still understanding what the effects of eating plastic are. There's some early research that says it changes fish behavior and like early development. Um, so then maybe that means the fish doesn't know how to be a fish as well, you know, and then it can mess up a lot of other biological cues. Um, 
yeah, and then of course there's like chemical pollutants, right? And that can affect oxygen levels in in the in the water and then cause like dead zones. And then you just have like large areas of ocean that have no oxygen, which is crazy, right? Um, yeah, so in terms of what to do, uh, I think policy wise, it'd be really good to um, introduce more biodegradable materials. Like some countries now they've banned plastic bags or when they, if you buy a plastic bag, it's like made out of like a, a biodegradable material, which is um, really helpful. Um, and then there's a lot of other things about like regulating water discharge. Um, a lot of countries have their own regulating body that will go around and sample different water bodies to make sure there's not like high levels of pollutants in the, in the water that's going to the ocean. And then if there is, they can write somebody a fine uh, for doing so. Um, what's cool about these policy changes is like, once they're implemented, they're kind of in the background, people don't notice it. It's not gonna really inconvenience somebody if they have to buy a biodegradable bag versus a plastic bag. What do you think youth can do to raise awareness about this issue? The more people ask politicians these questions, the more politicians will start proposing policies to do so. I think like in terms of your day-to-day -day life, um, yeah, don't eat as much meat. Like you don't have to have a steak every single day. Like I'm not saying go vegetarian by any means, and unless you really want to, I think that's great too. But you know, just say, oh, like I'm only gonna eat meat twice a week or something. A lot of cities have awesome public transportation, so if you if you can do that, fantastic. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of like a lot of planting trees is really good stuff that carb uh, cap uh, captures carbon and things like that. Um, I think uh, one of the biggest uh, contributions to co climate change is, is travel, right? So if you can take a train instead of a plane, that's always good. Uh, and lastly, how do you think we can reduce water waste? In terms of like pollutants and stuff, how can we reduce? Like I would just say, what you put down the uh, what you put down the drain really matters, right? So um, you should be looking at like what do your soaps have in them? Like hopefully, hopefully you're not using soap that has harsh chemicals. Um, but yeah, you should be looking to make sure that your your soaps don't have microbeads. Your soaps are like uh, they like aren't harsh to the environment. Um, if you're cleaning, if you're like cleaning something, don't like don't pour cleaner down the sink. You know, don't pour chemicals down the sink. Um, uh, a big one too is like medications. Like a lot of times when people are done with medications, they might like flush them down the toilet or something like that. Uh, but you can dispose of those at your pharmacy. They have a whole process for disposing old old um, medications and things like that. So, um, and then of course, recycling, making sure that, um, you know, plastic and trash isn't, isn't getting like, you know, you're not just throwing it out the window, like just put it in a, put it in a rubbish bin, put it, put it in a recycling bin. Um, just like take a little bit of an extra second to think about where should this, like what's the best place for this thing to go? As we just heard from Samantha, why clean water is important for our oceans and how technology can help combat water contamination. There's hope in the horizon. Cutting edge blue tech innovations are emerging as a game changing solution to combat water contamination. Blue tech, a new wave of technology designed to protect our oceans. For example, Algbio is a company that's harnessing the power of microalgae to clean wastewater while also capturing carbon dioxide. This technology not only purifies water, but also produces valuable byproducts like biofuels and bioplastics. It's an incredible example of how innovation can turn environmental challenges into opportunities. And it doesn't just stop there. There are companies developing floating trash collectors that can skim the plastic off the surface of the ocean, and others that are working on desalination technologies that provide clean drinking water from the sea. So, what's the takeaway? Redesigning water filtration systems isn't just about improving our technology. It's about safeguarding our health, protecting marine life, and ensuring that future generations can enjoy clean water. And the best part is, you can be part of this movement. Whether it's using a water filter at home, reducing your plastic use, or supporting new tech innovations, every action counts. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Harmonious Oceans. Remember, the ocean is calling, and it's up to us to answer. Stay curious, stay active, and let's make waves for a better planet. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.